So some of the networks did some little snap polling after the debate. Some of them did some focus groups of undecided voters to see what they thought instantly after the debate. Let's take a listen to a little bit of what CNN's undecided voter panel had to say. Who do you think won by a show of hands? Former President Trump. Two, I'll give it four, but tentative. Two over there. What about Vice President Harris? More hands. For those of you who thought this debate could be determinative, how many of you have made up your minds based on what you saw tonight on stage in Philadelphia? Raise your hands. All right, I want to ask you why. I think it's important to remember that we are voting for the leader of our country and not who we like the most or who we want in our wedding party, but who is actually going to make our country better. And we're in an incredibly unique situation where we've had both of the candidates in office before and we've gotten to see what they would do. And when facts come to facts, my life was better when Trump was in office. The economy was higher, inflation was lower, things were better overall. And now with um, Kamala's administration, things haven't been so fantastic. And she's saying she can fix the problems that her administration has caused, but I just don't know if I can afford to take that risk. Were you leaning towards the former president coming in tonight? Probably. And did you vote for him in 2016 or 2020? I did. So she had been a previous Trump voter. She, you know, was leaning towards him, but um, yeah. undecided on this CNN voter panel. So you have, on the one hand, overwhelmingly people like Kamala won, but at least one voter raising some concerns about the, the question Trump should have made at the core of his debate performance, which is, are you better off now than you were 40 yeah, years ago? Yeah, this is a debate I have with uh, Trump people all the time. It's always like, let Trump be Trump and all of that. And I go, well, look, Trump has been Trump and uh, it sometimes <laughs> works and sometimes doesn't. Overwhelmingly, I mean, this is part of the issue is you do hear from a lot of people like that woman who are like, I like the policies, but it pisses me off. Someone described him to me as an ugly plumber uh, with a massive ass crack, but a guy who does a really <laughs> good job. And so you just okay. have to look away. You got to look away from the crack and you just let the man fix the pipes. And I was like, you know, that is a very apt way that right. a lot of people think about Donald Trump. Uh, I've, that one stuck with me uh, for a long time. I understand but, why. Yeah. And I think that, that, that what Trump can do sometimes is like, I remember his very first state of the union, he was acting presidential. Every once in a while he'll do, I, I think it was when George H.W. Bush died, you know, he was like shockingly silent for like two weeks and everyone was, everyone couldn't believe it. Every once in a while when he does that, his approval rating actually does take up quite a bit. People have a lot of fondness for the Trump era, at least in terms of their personal finances. And the more that he could remind them of that and not of chaos, he'd be better. One piece of analysis I saw, which was really spot on is, and I'm wondering if you agree, did it not seem like Trump was the incumbent in that debate. Everything was about him or things that were controversies around him. It's like, he's been out of office for four years. Yeah. The best he could have done was to be like, no, 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 I'm not in office. I'm running to get back into office to run against the chaos of the Kamala Biden administration. And so that's another thing where I think he really screwed up and, and missed the opportunity to win over people like her. Because there's a lot more others like her who probably went the other way. You know, I rewatched um, mm -hmm. some of the debate and the first 15 minutes or so mm -hmm. before she really gets under his skin, he's pretty on message. Yeah, he was good. You know, he's, the he's getting the section. better of the, of the exchanges. She's a little nervous, clearly, at the very beginning. And then once she said that thing about his rallies, it was over. Like, the mind was, like, wiped clean. And everything that he had practiced and planned to do and the talk, about, it was gone. And then she was calling every single shot. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, he utterly failed to try to land the points that he wanted to land. That doesn't change some of the underlying dynamics of the race, ultimately. Um, but, you know, if we can put up on the screen the uh, the CNN flash poll, which is pretty consistent. I mean, it was, it was pretty overwhelming that Harris outperformed Trump in this debate. Um, Pre-debate, you had this same group of watchers split down the middle as to who they expected to do better. So it shows you it was like pretty evenly divided going in. You had half saying they think Kamala would win, half saying they thought Trump would win. Post-debate, 63% said that Kamala Harris won and 37% say that Trump won. And maybe maybe most notable to me was the fact that uh, some 30% even of Republicans were like, yeah, she got him. She got him on this one. So there was a, a you know, it was very clear consensus 
that she got the better of him um, that night. So, you know, is it ultimately going to matter? I think the thing for, part of why I think this will be consequential is that Trump has such a mystique around him as this showman, as Teflon Don, someone who just can, you know, charge his way through anything and, um, you know, gets the better of anyone who he goes toe-to-toe with. And here you have this woman who um, has been, you know, very caricatured and at times rightfully so for being kind of incompetent, verbally incontinent and all over the place, et cetera, et cetera. And the fact that she was able to make him look small and to really dominate him in the sense of causing him to have to react to what she wanted to talk about, you know, it really does puncture some of the aura and some of the mystique around Donald Trump. And that's part, and you know, her whole strategy has been different than the Hillary strategy, different than the Biden strategy of trying to make him look small. So while he is up there glowering and furious and seeing red over, you know, the rallies or whatever else she was goading him on, she is laughing. She's above the fray. She's enjoying it. She's having a good time. And so that's that's part of why I do think that this debate will end up being pretty consequential is because it really damaged a core part of his appeal and his mystique and his aura that had made him so powerful in American politics. And it's also part of why I think the strategy that they have landed on of the, you know, sort of dismissive, like, roll your eyes, not taking his bait has been so much more effective than when previously, you know, whatever he threw out there, they were just chasing after the ball endlessly, moralizing about it, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, and look, there's a lot of evidence to say that this could be. Let's put the next one, please, up on the screen. Uh, what we see in terms of uh, the snap polling from YouGov, who won the debate, Harris 43, Trump 28, unsure 30. I mean, the unsure number is still, you know, relatively high, so it's not like, it it was overwhelming, but it's still it's not good. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it's not good. All right, and then la- actually the next one. This convinced me more than anything, and it's always funny because I have to remind myself what I always sometimes think is the most impactful part of the debate. That's not what most people are. The number one search topic during the debate by state was abortion. The only state where it was different was Ohio, and that was immigration. Maybe because they were searching things about Haitian migrants, if I had to guess. But my point is just that if you look at all 50 states in the country, 49 out of 50, abortion is the number one search topic during that debate, possibly even looking at the various positions on abortion. And that's a massive win for the Democrats in yeah, my book. that's right. Um, and this Almost is, doesn't matter what they're searching about abortion. I that's didn't a win get for to Democrats. challenge Vita on this. We have a segment coming up with her. But I guess I'll preview it. Uh, <laughs> We've filmed this we out of order, so order, anyway. Just for scheduling purposes. She she was bringing up late-term abortion and all of that. And I'm like, listen, whether you morally object to late-term abortion or not, on a polling level, people don't care about it. At least they don't care enough when presented with the converse of a six-week ban. Uh, Republicans tried all throughout 2022. Democrats are the real radicals on abortion. Democrats are the real radicals on abortion. People don't care. They care a lot more about the six to 12 weeks of the Roe consensus than they do about edge cases of abortion that are after what, the sixth or this, between the sixth and the ninth month yeah. of pregnancy. Uh, and and I'm not even saying that, that I'm cool with that. I'm, or like empirically, it's not about what I think. It's about how people have responded to voting patterns. And Trump trotted out all the 2022 classics. Yeah. They're the real radicals. It's about late-term abortion. That's why I'm not going to vote for Amendment 4. Look at the polling on Amendment 4. It's overwhelmingly. It's amendment almost 4 certainly being the, the Florida Amendment. The Florida that Amendment. first seemed to indicate he was going to side with the pro-choice yes. side. Then there was a huge freak out among the pro-life community. Flip-flops within like 24 hours yeah. and says, no, I am going to exactly. vote against and it. Exactly. And actually, if you look at the polling, uh, people have become even more permissive in America of abortion they restrictions have. past the Roe versus Wade consensus. So if anything, it's actually backfired against the Republicans. So in general, that talking point, again, you you may be a conservative Christian and God bless you, but most Americans don't agree with you, period. Yeah. Especially whenever it comes to the ballot box. So uh, in terms of his answer, where he landed, it doesn't work. Where there's just, there's I mean, zero evidence. But also, where did he even land? Because that's the other piece is, 
you know, as much as Kamala rightfully gets pegged as a flip-flopper, and that mm-hmm. is true, and, you know, that's another area where he just failed. Yep. She baited him on something about his dad's net worth, and again, he just yep, chased yep. that down totally the totally. rabbit hole and let her, you know, skate in terms of some of the pos- different positions she's taken. But, you know, moving back to abortion, he gets asked this question, okay, your running mate says you would veto a national abortion ban. Would you? And he's like, oh, I don't really talk to that guy, so I don't know what he's talking He won't commit. And uh, clearly, um, he, Sagar, really felt the heat from pro-lifers yes. when he tried to re- actually, on a policy level, mm-hmm. moderate on abortion. You heard that from Evita. That was the one thing that she was, well, you're going to hear from you're, Evita. You will really hear <laughs> You will hear from Avita, our young Republican uh, woman who we had on to talk about some of these issues, and she criticizes him mm-hmm. about how he, you know, moved to the pro-choice side. So even though, uh, the, you know, he didn't really have to run in a primary, um, you know, he was sort of stayed, just stayed out of it, didn't participate in the debates or whatever, even though he has really tried to lean into this rhetoric about just leave it up to the states, et cetera, et cetera. This is still a powerful coalition that really has a hold on him, so much so that even though he recognizes this issue is a major problem from him, he cannot bring himself to break in a hard way from them. And I don't know that it would really benefit him if, even if he did. Because the bottom line is, Kamala Harris can always say, you, as she did in the debate, you handpicked these three mm-hmm. Supreme Court justices to put on the bench and overturn row. And then when she framed it as, because he tries to say, oh, well, this is what people wanted. And she flips it back and says, no, the women who are bleeding out in a parking lot, the 12-year-old girls who were raped by their stepdads, no, they they did not want this. And it continues to be, you know, as evidenced by that search data, it continues to be very powerful. When we picked our, our top moments from the debate, there were a lot of candidates the pets thing, I mean, that's just like the iconic, you know, memorable, ridiculous, absurd, like a, a revealing moment from the debate. But I actually picked the abortion one because yeah, yeah. Yeah. it was such a, because it's such an important issue and because he still is so bad on it and still has no idea what to say. And I continue to think like there isn't really an answer here that that can work for him regardless of um, where he tries to land or what talking points he tries to yeah. tries to ultimately you know, use. I mean, do you know, want to know how insane this is? With a, the, congratulations, by the way, pro-lifers. You got Trump to disavow a position that 80% of the American people are against. 80%. Even people who are pro-life, who are like in terms of the Roe versus Wade, they don't even support a national ban on abortion. If you look at it, three quarters, even three quarters of Americans, people who are pro-life, say that there should not be a federal law banning abortion at six weeks, some 60% at 15 weeks. So the Roe consensus has literally never been more popular than ever. And JD, who is a practicing pro-life Catholic, gave you the political layup of, yeah, he would ban uh, an abort, he would not sign a national abortion ban. He would veto it. And he still decided to go along. What is he doing? I mean, this is where I look at Trump's calculus sometimes and I just have to remind it like uh, uh, honestly sometimes he is just an idiot or he's somebody who his political uh, his political like dialed in nature is not there. Yeah. Where previously, I, I really believe that 2016 Trump, if he were presented with that same landscape, absolutely would not have done this. This is actually him, a case being too immersed in the traditional GOP, where there are a lot of people who probably support something like that, and who are in his ear uh, convincing him that this is a bigger constituency. If he was truly dialed in the way that he has been in the past, there's no way that you're gonna come out on a 20% issue. Impossible. So I have been, I've been yeah. sort of like workshopping a monologue right. in my head that I may do uh, yeah. for next week about Trump's uh, political evolution uh-huh. and how he, uh, what current bubble he is in. So in 2016, he really comes out of the like New York tabloid scene, yeah. Yeah, right? right? He's like New York Post. Yes. That's kind of his, that's his thing, right? So it's sensationalist, it's crass, but there is some like connection to the reality of like how people view issues and what normal people think about various things that are happening in the country. And you know, it's sort of like where Piers Morgan is, right? Yeah. It's tabloid. Then he's really swimming in the Fox News world. Right, and Kyle calls him Fox News grandpa in 2020, and I think that's right. You know, he's just totally immersed in this like conservative but mainstream conservative 
echo chamber. So already a lot of the populist elements from 2016 are stripped down in 2020, and he's this like Fox News grandpa. Now it's like truth social person, <laughs> psycho, whatever. And that's where you get the pets from. He's hanging out with Laura Loomer. I mean, it's just, I think after Fox News calls the election for Biden, and is actually the first to call Arizona for Biden, there's a rupture with Fox News. At the same time, he's, um, you know, he gets kicked off of Twitter. So now he's on Truth Social, which is truly this very niche fringe ecosystem. And those are the waters he's swimming in. And that really comes out in his politics and in how he's talking about issues and how he's responding to issues and how he's thinking about things and what he chooses to highlight. And so, um, you know, I think a lot of the evolution of Trump can be explained because he is such a media creature that that's an important way to understand who he is at that present moment. And I think that accounts for a lot of the, the differences between the 2016 Trump who has his finger on the pulse of something and the 2024 Trump where you're like, what, what the hell are you even thinking right now? What world do you live in where you thought that this would be a good idea? So, um, you know, I think that that changed media diet has really done a number on him, not to mention just being in the bubble of being a president and a post-president, surrounding yourself constantly with sycophants, et cetera, et cetera. Um, to get back to some of the, the, we have one more, Washington Post did a undecided voter panel as well. This is pretty overwhelming, we put this up on the screen. So out of 25 people, 23 said they thought that Harris won, two said that they thought Trump performed better, you know, they also interviewed these individuals um, throughout the debate, and even the ones who said Harris performed better, there was, you know, there was some movement towards her also in terms of which way people were planning on voting, which is obviously really significant. There were still some questions raised about like, hey, I need to know more about her. But probably the thing that I took most note of, um, which we t commented on on uh, debate night as well, is with regard to this like pets. Haitian migrants situation, there was just deep confusion about what the hell he was even talking about, which again gets to the like truth social bubble that he's existing in, where his conspiracies are so outlandish and so fringe, people like normal people just don't even comprehend what your point you're even trying to get across. So um, I thought that was interesting as yeah, well. Yeah, that happened a lot in 2020, actually. I remember it did, just, yeah, there uh, were some. Would be, Trump would be saying something where I'm like, dude, I only know what you're talking about because I do this for a living. Yeah. Like, I know way too many people who are like, what? Like, what is he saying? And that simplicity, look, this is what made him actually a strong candidate in 2016. It wasn't about being online. He intuited a basic fact about America. He said, Americans don't like the way that things are going. That was actually very counterintuitive in politics at that time. American carnage, still one of the most important speeches in modern American history, because it was counter to the way that most people in the elite circles thought about the direction of the country. This time, and it was simple. It was about immigration, and it was simply really about rolling back the Obama era consensus. This time around, it's a mishmash, there's an amalgam. Now, that doesn't mean he still can't win, because a lot of Biden is a very unpopular and economic tends, trends, et cetera. But he's not doing his best, I think, to convince people to vote for him. And actually, you know, you do see a lot of that. Like, for example, can we put B5 on the screen? A lot of these uh, Trump hair, a lot of these swing state voters who were asked about, uh, from the Washington Post specifically, about how they thought Trump and Harris performed. 23 out of 25 said Kamala Harris did. And this is not, you know, it's not just a bunch of liberals who are in this group. You even look at a lot of the people who were saying that Harris performed better, and they're like, look, I'm frustrated with the status quo. We deserve better. I appreciate his Trump, you know, I'm reading from one. I appreciate Trump has strong views and trusts his ability to make strong decisions. I worry that Harris may lack clear convictions or follow through. Still thinks that Kamala had done better and mm -hmm. has a preference now for Harris. So these are not people who are brainwashed or any are deeply partisan in any way. And I think that, you know, thinking about trying to intuit that part of the country right there where where the overall trend is in general. He's not as dialed in as he was back in 2016. Yeah. I think that's generally a mistake. Yeah, and they asked those same individuals before the debate, okay, who are you leaning towards, mm -hmm. right, if you have a lean? And before the debate, 12 said Harris and 10 said Trump. Three were, others were undecided, like totally unsure, or they said neither actually is what they said. Mm -hmm. Afterwards, there were still three that said neither. Um, but the Harris number moved from 12 to 15, and she now had five people that said they were definitely voting for her, whereas before they were on the fence. 
Trump's number went down from 10 to 6. So he lost four voters, and no one moved from the probably Trump to the definitely Trump column. So at least, listen, it's a small sample, obviously not statistically significant, et cetera, et cetera. But still, if you're just looking at how ordinary people process this debate in real time, it shows you something something happened here for Trump. And I do think part of it was just she did a perfect job of queuing him up, and he took the bait in a way that her top advisors could never have possibly dreamed in their wildest dreams how much he would chase every rabbit down the hole every time she tempted him to do so. Yep. Hey, if you like that video, hit the like button or leave a comment below. It really helps get the show to more people. And if you'd like to get the full show ad-free and in your inbox every morning, you can sign up at breakingpoints.com. That's right. Get the full show, help support the future of independent media at breakingpoints.com.